Handheld vacuums have been around for many decades, but it was only when Dyson entered the market in this area did they take off big in the home. As always, this happened because Dyson's products were done properly, thanks to their philosophy of solving problems and striving to be the best, rather than churning out mere adequacy for a fast buck at the expense of the consumer. Their cordless cleaners are now the best on the market by far, in terms of performance and usability, and their technology is the better part of a decade ahead of the competition. Most competing products still use the terrible old-fashioned conventional motors that take ages to start and stop, and the scan products which attempt digital motors use technology that is still inferior to Dyson's earlier digital motors from almost 10 years ago. The popularity of Dyson's brilliant cordless products has meant other companies have now jumped on the bandwagon to try and siphon off some of the green, and there's a cordless revolution currently happening. Powering these cordless cleaners is a battery. Battery technology has been under-researched for many decades in science, and the technological development had stagnated. The recent rise of mobile consumer electronics and electric vehicles has ignited a demand for better battery technology, and so research is picked up again. This video isn't about the science of batteries, which would be a separate video in itself, but suffice to say, there's a scientific renaissance happening in the world of battery technology academic research now. In about 10 years, batteries in the consumer space will improve staggeringly, with enormous capacities that can power devices for 10 times longer, and the batteries will charge in seconds rather than hours. Such prototypes already exist in laboratories, so this isn't pipe dream talk, it's real and it's coming. Cordless vacuum runtime is dependent on two factors, battery capacity and power drain. Battery capacity is also determined by two main factors, the choice of chemistry and the number of battery cells in the pack. Chemistries vary and many manufacturers simply buy battery technology from other suppliers. Better manufacturers have established their own research team to research new and better battery chemistries and technologies. Using more battery cells increases battery capacity and potential run times, but it also adds more weight. So there's a balance to be had for a given chemistry between maximum runtime and weight. Power drain varies depending on the mode used on the vacuum and whether any tool attachments used require power. Another factor is whether the machine is always on or whether it's used smartly and more efficiently with an on-off trigger. Marketing departments love to claim the maximum possible runtime because to the average consumer, bigger numbers are often interpreted as better, even though that's not always true due to the effects of efficiency. Nevertheless, you'll always see runtime stated with an asterisk, which if you read it, tells you what assumptions are being made to achieve that number. The battery capacity is fixed, and so the longest run times are achieved with the lowest power drain, meaning those numbers are likely for the lowest power modes and without tool attachments which draw power. Better manufacturers also provide run times for other modes and give the customer more information. A lot of Dyson brand haters criticise them for stating maximum run times, claiming it was misleading despite all the information about how to achieve that runtime being freely given in marketing. What such naysayers have never acknowledged, however, is that this is universal marketing practice, and all manufacturers do it. Not all provide a range of runtimes, though, as provided by Dyson's front end marketing. Such criticisms didn't really add up. Unsurprisingly, the best cordless vacuum battery technology can be found in Dyson products, specifically their V10, as of making this video. Unlike competitors who may buy off the shelf battery technology from other suppliers, Dyson have established their own research team to research new and better battery chemistries and technologies. This effort shines through in the V10 because they've achieved a really high energy density, meaning more capacity per cell, so fewer cells can be used, reducing weight. Competitors currently have large, bulky, and heavy batteries by comparison, and often still don't achieve the same capacity. That extra weight makes it much harder on the wrist to use, particularly as the design of products doesn't keep that weight behind the hand as with Dyson's machines. Having inferior batteries means that, often, a single battery just isn't enough to get a good cleaning session done. As such, some manufacturers resort to providing two batteries and relying on marketing to spin this as a positive thing, when really, it's nothing of the sort. Two batteries means two need to be charged, there's twice the battery cost, which is palmed off onto the customer and reflected in the relatively higher price, 
and there's twice the amount of materials needed per customer for two batteries, with twice the pollution at end of life, so it's not very environmentally friendly practice. Just look at the Samsung PowerStick Pro. It markets 80 minutes of runtime, but in small print, subtly mentions that only if you buy a second battery, and it won't be cheap. Shark's advertising page is equally dodgy. You get up to 44 minutes of runtime, but only using both battery packs. And some said Dyson's runtime claims were deceitful. It just doesn't add up. Whereas a single lighter Dyson battery, without any of the switching hassle or extra environmental harm, achieves at least an acceptable cleaning session. This is why their battery technology is vastly superior. On top of this, Dyson showed that with smart use of the Feather Touch trigger, you can get an additional 30% more runtime on top of that maximum 60 minutes they market. By being intelligent and smart with your power drain, by not unnecessarily keeping the clean on all the time and wasting the battery power, you can get even more runtime out of it. They can't claim this 30% more in marketing because it's user dependent rather than a physical property, but clever design means you benefit even more. Another way Dyson's batteries are superior is that they retain 80% of their original maximum charge after 15 years. This is in comparison to many competitors whose batteries start to lose similar life after just 5 years. In summary, Dyson researches battery technology and has the most advanced batteries found in any cordless cleaner as of making this video, by a significant margin. Combined with ultra smart use of power consumption and vacuuming practice, their product runtimes vastly surpass the competition. Their batteries are also lighter and of much longer lifetimes, and only a single battery is needed. Batteries are just one technology which Dyson cordless cleaners vastly surpass beyond the competition, and why they're the better part of a decade ahead of the rest, technologically. In technology terms, that's very substantial. As the old saying goes, you get what you pay for, so my advice is to save up, and if you can afford it, buy the best and leave the cheap knockoffs on the shelves.